We are now live on, not yet, Hannah, can you hit stop? Oh, God. Namaste, yogis. Welcome to episode two of the Happy Jack Yoga podcast. So excited to be with you. Uh, coming at you live, uh, myself from Cambridge, Massachusetts, USA, and Hanna in Bracebridge, Ontario, Canada. Namaste. And just, just such an honor to be here. Again, we have yogis joining us live. Big shout out. We got yogis in the UK, down in the States, uh, here up in Canada. And just really appreciate you coming together because this is really for us what yoga is all about. It's about community. It's about connection. It's about unity. Uh, so I see the, the love and the hearts coming in. We're sending it all back to each of you and and really want to welcome you. You know, this is, a, this is an extension of what uh, we've been doing at Happy Jack Yoga University. And, and really what's different about the podcast is this is a way where we, this is, if you've, if you've been a member of Happy Jack Yoga University, which many of you live have been, you know, we, we do sharing circles and that's creating a space where people can connect in a Zoom breakout room and really get to know each other. And then we have a mentorship program, which is where I, I coach you and I mentor you. And of course we have live yoga classes and business of yoga support. Uh, and this podcast is really, you know, to get it out to the masses that, you know, what we really, what we're all about and what we love which is this practice of yoga. And the cool thing is that you can also join us live. So if you're watching this on Facebook, if you're watching this on YouTube, or if you are listening on Apple or Google or Spotify, uh, there's gonna be a link in the comments, link in the show notes to, to get the Zoom code and be able to come in here so we can see your face. Because right now I see Pam, she is eating her lunch and it's in a, a breakfast and I love that. And I, Diana is in her car right now, uh, you know, on her way listening and, and absorbing the beautiful vibes. And, and many of you, you know, you know, just living your lives, lives and being able to come together and connect. So again, we're so excited to be here. Hanna, welcome. So awesome to be here with you. Thank you. You as well. And you know something that we're we're super excited about is is this upcoming weekend. We just got to throw it out there because it's coming so soon. But our hero's journey, the 200-hour yoga teacher training, is kicking off on Sunday, September 17th. As I look around at you know all the yogis who are here live with us, uh, basically all of you, yes, are graduates of the hero's journey. And and what I love about the hero's journey, what I love about yoga teacher training it really prepares us for anything. It prepares us to, to step out of our comfort zone, prepares us to try, try something new, you know, and, uh, you know, we were kind of laughing earlier. I, w I was just this past Friday, I went to the local uh, temple, the local Bhakti yoga temple, uh, where the basically like an ashram. And I was there and I was kind of connecting and hanging out and the and the, the the leader there asked hey would you mind leading a you know a five or a ten minute yoga class and i was like sure you know no problem but even even just that right there that invitation had it been you know many years ago i i would have frozen up and had a bit of anxiety right there because like oh my goodness to stand in a room and in front of people who i don't know it, it really it, it's it's vulnerable and it's and it and it take it does take some courage to do that but you know, through these through this practice of yoga and yoga teacher training, I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." And then, uh, if anybody's on our mailing list or if you're on our social media and you saw the photo of what I walked into and the the pile of shoes that were literally like up to my knees deep and overflowing out the front entrance of this uh, of this you know yoga this bhakti yoga ashram, and and so I was like, "Okay, it seems like there's a few people here." And you know, then walked into the room, and there were over two hundred, over two hundred uh, students. They had just arrived to the USA from India, so they've come over here to do master's degrees, um, or you know, various various education. That came to the local community, and and they were packed in there like sardines. There was no room. I mean, shoulder to shoulder. Uh, and and I'm thinking to myself. Who am I, you know, to, to teach yoga? To, they just came off the airplane straight from India, you know, the the birthplace of yoga, 
And, you know, so on one side, I'm like, who am I to, to share yoga with them? And there, there's no yoga mats, there's no space. Um, and then again, just really remembering that yoga, yoga is about bringing people together, connecting to our breath, connecting to our best selves, connecting to a uh, higher self, you know, whatever that means for each of us. And, and so was able to, you know, you know, create some connection, tell a few stories, do a little bit of breathing, have everyone close their eyes, do a visualization, um, chant some mantra, and, and really just bring the community together. And, and, and again, I say that because but before yoga teacher training, there's no way, there's no way I would have felt comfortable just being in, standing up in front of 200 plus yogis. You know, I, in fact, I remember my very first yoga teacher training, I was a hider. You know, it was, it was, it was in, I don't know, a lot of years ago now, it was in Hawaii and I was put in a small group and I, I didn't want to share, you know, I, I, I didn't, I, I just wanted to kind of sit on the sidelines, but thankfully the team that I was with, they, they really encouraged me to, to be the team leader and to share. And, and every, it seems like every time that we do that, you know, it just causes us to, to, to grow and, and to expand our threshold of comfort. So anyways, just had to throw that out um, because yo again, yoga teacher training starting this weekend um, for you, Hanna, you know, when you think about yoga teacher training, you've also done a lot of yoga teacher training. What has it meant for you in, in your own practice? And then of course, what you've observed with all of the, the beautiful souls who are here with us live and, and listening. Well, first of all, like my own experience of becoming a yoga teacher to me, it felt like, like a new start. Like I got to redefine who I was and what I wanted to do with my time. Um, it was a really powerful kind of, I felt like it was like a rebirth in a way that I learned things about myself that I didn't know about myself yet as a result of um, being put in a room where, where I was challenged, not just with the yoga poses, but then also to tell other people what to do, right. To tell them to breathe in or breathe out. Like it feels like a, a responsibility, right? So that I would say is, is the, th and, and do you know what, Jack, I remember what actually really like made me make the decision of becoming a yoga teacher is actually a question or a statement you said, Jack, you said something like this. You said, um, I think you said something like this, that like, I would not be who I am if it wasn't for my first yoga teacher training. Like you, somehow you kind of said that it has been such a big pivotal moment in your life. And then of course I was like thinking like, wait a minute, what does that mean to me? in yeah. terms of like, who would I be if I allowed myself to do that training, even just for, for like, for curiosity, like I did not really think maybe that I would teach yoga. I don't know. A lot of people take a yoga teacher training to deepen their practice. And oftentimes, and that was the case for me, deepening the practice, um, means that you then you want to share it and because the training kind of teaches you about things you did not know about yourself strengths I did not know I had you know and a lot of the yoga philosophy will light that up for us as as yogis not just the teacher training but that's like a powerful way to be immersed in in the yoga teachings and then to actually turn around and put them into act action like not just a great idea like yeah that's a good idea or you know so and I see that like to answer your second question about what I've seen as a teacher training facilitator I see that over and over again that each individual who allows themselves to be in a space like that they allow themselves to grow they you know, like say that we do an exercise, like teach a sun salutation A to your friend. Like it sounds really simple, but then it isn't. And when people allow themselves to even try, miracles happen in terms mm -hmm. of like, 
it's a powerful life lesson moment about who you are and how you express yourself. And it's also like a big, deep question of like belonging, like what type of person am I? And do I allow myself to, even if it's not about the teacher in the beginning, it is because it's about allowing myself to be in a so-called leadership position where I tell somebody what to do. And of course, I'm not doing it to, to like, um, be somebody else's leader or boss. It's, it really comes from a humble place of wanting to share the practice, but in, in the actual doing it, you will have to allow yourself to be seen and heard. And that for a lot of people is kind of foreign, right? Mm. So it's yeah. a very powerful process of, of um, expressing oneself in, in different and new ways and in a very beautiful way because also yoga is about connection. So it's not about like, here's what I'm going to tell you what to do. Really, it's a dialogue between you and another human being's body. So you see how they move and then you, you know how to give them something that is useful to them in finding a yoga pose, mm. right? Yeah, and, and it, I love that. And it, it all comes from our, our own personal practice, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, like you say, because we, we get on our mat, we do the practice ourselves, and we feel, we experience the magic of it. Um, then there, there is one, there's that desire to serve, that desire to share with others. Um, and, and like you alluded to, you know, really just seeing, like seeing the student, being present with another individual. And this is where we get to take yoga off the mat, Right and out of the studio uh, as practitioner or or teacher and and really create that connection and whether it's with the the checkout uh, person at the grocery store or a person in the elevator or you know just sharing a smile with the person I you know really this past month I'm 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 going back to my old self of making a conscious effort to every person that I walk by and and sharing a smile and saying good morning and I've found here in in you know nothing against. Harvard University or Cambridge, Massachusetts, but I found it's most people tend to kind of stick with themselves, right? They're kind of on a mission, a little bit head down, like, and, and yet this, this is where as yogis, we get to practice connection and we get to, you know, initiate that good morning, initiate that smile. And, and, and it, and that all, all of these little things come from that initial stepping out of our comfort zone, becoming a yoga teacher. And, and in fact, many of our students, they don't even, they don't even join to become yoga teachers necessarily, because it's, we, we get to grow in so many ways, whether or not we actually end up standing at the front of a class called poses or not. Um, although many, uh, many do become inspired to because we see the impact that it can have. So uh, yeah, I love that. And, and really, I mean, if we, if we think about it, you know, this, this practice of yoga, it's, it's, it's never ending. Like, you know, I, as so many times on, along the journey, I felt like, okay, like I've, I've done the work. I can do this now. I've, I've accomplished this and, and only to find out that like, there's, there's more work to be done. And it's, and in the one side, there's a lot to be pleased of, right. Of the, of the growth and the, the contribution. But at the same time, you know, it's like every, the, the deeper that we dig, the more we realize that there's, there's more work to be done. Um, and, and, and that's why we're here. And that's why we're super excited. Uh, this coming weekend, the, the next 200 hour heroes journey is beginning again. I'm, I'm seeing, you know, I'm seeing, uh, uh, chats and, and love and stuff and smiles and nodding heads with the yogis here in zoom of really what's possible. And, you know, there's, there's really nothing else in the world that I'd rather be doing, that we would rather be doing. You know, there's, you know, having spent 10 years working for John Deere and John Deere, great company, love you, uh, grew so much from that experience. Uh, and, and at the same time, recognized that it wasn't the contribution I was having there in that corporate environment was not filling me, <clears throat> you know, filling me up, fulfilling, certainly not spiritually, and now to be able to, to do this work um, that where we really get to come together and connect and share so openly. Like I, again, I look at all the yogis who are here with us live. Sandra, you know, from Queen, she was just with us in India and the beautiful experiences we had there. 
You know, we get to, you know, Pam and this is the work, the great work that she's doing with bringing the Dharma and life purpose together with the yoga and bringing it to, to her community. You know, and uh, Alice, Alice and Scott, they're out in the, the nature right now in the UK countryside and, and, you know, just being together and listening and, and being on this journey together. And I could go on and on, um, but this is, it's really what it's about, I would say as well, building these relationships, you know, having, having spent my, my tendency is to be an introvert and my tendency, as you know, Hannah, is to kind of hibernate, you know, COVID in one sense was a real blessing for me because I didn't have to go anywhere, got to hibernate. And yet now having these friends and these friendships and whether it's online or in person and, and just being able to, to be real and to share. And I, I feel like this is a big part of what, um, what the, what the practice is about. We get to really prioritize, you know, what, it, what, what is really the priority? Um, you know, I, something else I thought of when I was teaching and when I was speaking to these 200 uh, young Indians, young, young Indian students, I, if, if I get the chance again, which at some point I will, what I would have wanted to say is, listen, because they all came here to study, you know, like software engineering and artificial intelligence and, you know, really smart kids um, doing their masters in all this, you know, typically kind of tech area. And that's fantastic, you know, if that's a passion that they have. <clears throat> and I would want to share, you know, I, I myself spent, you know, 10 years in engineering and, and then got an MBA to, to climb the corporate ladder and, and, you know, did all these kinds of things. And, and when, when you have that big paycheck or the big house or the, you know, whatever those things, they, they didn't bring happiness. They didn't bring fulfillment. And by the way, we got no problem. I mean, if anybody here, you know, if you love to have a big home to bring people together, that's perfect, right? If you if you love a big vehicle because it's handy and functional and you can do your work, that's perfect as well. Um, but it but ultimately, those material things don't bring the the happiness and the fulfillment. And I think I mentioned on the first episode, like when I you know I went from that you know living in a big house in Iowa, working for John Deere to then downsizing into a condo uh, in Calgary, Alberta, but it was still pretty fancy, could see the Rocky Mountains. And then from there downsized into a basement apartment, which is when I got sober and found yoga. And then from there moved home with my parents and then eventually homeless, became a, a wandering vagabond. And then that's when I met you. Um, and then, you know, things picked up again, but the, the beautiful thing as as I was letting go, kind of simplifying my life, getting rid of material things, happiness, happiness, um, you know, just became way more happy. And so I would just want to say to those young kids and say to, you know, remind all of us, I, I know I'm preaching to the choir for many of us, but just remind us that um, these th this accumulation of things, especially in, in light of what happened last week, if you again, if you listen to episode one, on the day we launched episode one, my parents' house caught on fire, like half the, the top half of the house is gone. And, you know, so it's like, it really puts things into perspective, this material things, what, what really matters. And um, again, not saying that, you know, nobody should have a house and a vehicle and all of that, but you know, many of you, again, many of you get it. I know Wandering Alice and Scott really simplifying their lives. Uh, Elizabeth, very really simplifying, and, and many of us in our own authentic way. And so I want you know something that you're we're very aware, we're very um, sensitive to, Hannah, right? Is to not preach or not say like this is the way or you should do this, uh, but really sharing from our experience. And yeah, it's 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 amazing to see what this yoga practice, what this journey of becoming a yoga teacher ultimately does. Um, on our lives. So with that, I would love to, you know, I just want to put it out there because this is, this is episode two. If you have any feedback, we just want you to know, like you're part of our community. If you're one of the, the 13 yoga, 13 yogis live with us right now in zoom, or if you're listening or watching somewhere else, if you have any feedback of what you would like us to explore what would you like us to discuss if you have any questions in fact if you have a question email us info 
at happyjackyoga.com uh, comes right to our team and and you know we want to we want to make this relevant for each of you you know everybody who's watching everybody who's listening so please do you know connect with us let us know let us know how we can be better it's a big part of our our culture is rooted in this idea of can i which is constant and never ending improvement and so every, every episode, every time, you know, Hun and I will meet after this episode and start with, you know, some celebrations. What went great? What, what really felt authentic? What flowed well? And also, what could we have done differently? What could we have done to make it even better next time? And, and we value your feedback. So, you know, if you're here with us live, throw it in the chat or send us an email um, so that we can, we can just really serve you at the, at the highest level. And you know the other thing we wanted to talk about was what it what it's actually was like to start this podcast because we're just getting started we're figuring ourselves out. If you watched on Facebook you're going to see the little fumble at the beginning where we hit the record too early and stopped we did that twice and you know it was that, we're here to learn right we're figuring this stuff out. Um, but i'll tell you what this this idea to do a podcast has really been around for you know some years we've been thinking about it it's been like a project it's been like on the back burner and and i feel like for myself what really clicked of like yeah this is the way that we can do it is to do it here live in zoom because this is a platform we're so comfortable with <clears throat> these yogis i see lorna tammy diana sue you know mariana you know on and on we're live with them multiple times every single week, you know, right here in Zoom. And this is this is like a platform that feels authentic for us. It feels like, well, this is because if, if we were to just sit in a podcast studio with a big old microphone and a and a, and a boxed in wall that's all soundproofed, um, I'm sure it sounds amazing. But you know, we really love like right now. I just saw Pam's dog licking her. And I think that's awesome, you know, because it's like we're here, we're here together. And so I, that's that's when it it um is when it felt like something like, oh, well, we don't have a soundproof studio and we don't have fancy microphones and this and that. But it's like, well, we can do we can do what we're doing. And I guess that would be a, a reminder for everybody of, you know, we don't all have to become masters at Instagram reels. I'll admit I got no idea how to do it. Right, or we don't have to master in, in blogs or LinkedIn. I mean, there's so many different platforms. So it's finding it's finding the platform that that we love, where we get out of bed and can't wait to engage in, and the platform where even if you know, I'll be honest, even if there's a little bit of resistance some days to doing it, every single time that we finish, it's like you know, I after Sunday satsang with with all of you here in the community. I just so lifted up and so fulfilled uh, because we get to we get to be vulnerable, we get to be open, we get to be real, and so any, that was that was uh, part of the reason where we just drew a line in the sand and said, "Let's do this, let's do this podcast." You know, how about for yourself, Hanna? What is your, I guess, your uh, experience coming into this? How did it feel, episode one? Um, what has your experience been? Episode one felt really vulnerable because we were, I was in an emotional place. We had just heard the news and we're like digesting it. Um, so that was because of those circumstances. But other than that, I agree. This is the platform we are used to navigating. And we often experience a lot of magic with the community. So that's why we invite everyone to join these episodes because then you can be with it feels like an interactive thing not just you and i sitting in a room talking to each other which we could do and maybe at some point we will do but for right now it feels like the right way to be in the world because at the end of the day it's hard to describe what we do right to those who are not already in our yoga school and it's hard to describe what happens and what the, why we keep, like there's people who are on this call right now who've been with us for years and years. And it's not just because of you and I, Jack, it's because of all of us coming together. Like there's something special that happens. And I guess we could call it yoga union, 
community and and it's a place where we come to receive all of us we come to receive and that's why we then leave feeling fulfilled and also like to reflect on what you just shared about your journey jack of downsizing and and like the material things that don't necessarily bring fulfillment fulfillment ultimately it's because i think like through yoga we we get a a different type of fulfillment of from each other from being together and talking about topics that we're interested in that we might not have time to investigate and contemplate on because life is busy for everyone right everyone's got responsibilities and pressures from life no matter what path we chose even if you're a yoga teacher life can be really full of challenges but when we come together there's something about not carrying all of that alone and then also shifting perspectives endless amount of things that happen when we are in a space together so I'm grateful to like extend our circle and invite people who are not part of our community to join, whether you listen to one episode or you choose to come next time and join us live on Zoom. Um, It feels like a beautiful thing to do and something that's meaningful to me. Mm, Yeah, I love that. That's that's that really that nails it of really our kind of core intention is we multiple times a week we get to be in this space we get to be in this zoom and and hearing you know beautiful shares and beautiful breakthroughs and and beautiful vulnerability and excellent questions sometimes we know the answers to and sometimes we don't but it's just like beautiful inquiry and conversations that we get to engage in and and a big part is like well how can we how can we share this with others and i think that's that's something that comes from this again, from yoga teacher training, this desire to want to serve, this desire to want to contribute, right? It's not, it's not about becoming famous. I don't think we're going to be some big famous, I'm not expecting this podcast to blow up and become famous or, you know, Joe Rogan or anything, come on. But it's like in our own authentic way, you know, first of all, we get to serve our community who's here with us live. I see the smiles um, and, and invite in new people who might not be part of our yoga school, uh, but could still benefit from from listening while they're driving, you know, just being able to tune in. Yeah. And, and if I might, like, just if someone's listening to this and has not done our 200 hours, so we offer a yoga teacher training, like the basic type of yoga teacher training, it's called 200 hour. And within our system, we call it the hero's journey, because it's a journey that if you were to decide to join it, then you will go through your own process. And the way it works is that it happens in 13 weeks, but you can take as long as you like. So it's just to organize the content that we put it into 13 weeks. And then each week you go through some, you watch some videos, you get some journaling exercises, you'll do some yoga, um, depending on what you are interested in and how you are able to implement that into your life. And then on Sundays, we meet on Wednesdays and Sundays, we come to a live call and we share about like what we learned, uh, any, you know, insights we might have, what was hard, what was easy, what was fun, what was, and then there's a community that is in inquiry around that with you. And that's how, that's what we mean when we say yoga teacher training that happens online. And then you make friends and, and, and then it, that's how it becomes a community because we meet regularly and we share what we find and, and that's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a great point. And we get to, you know, in addition to what you just said, like what I love seeing personally, like we have this um, community forum. And so this is, it's like, it's like a Facebook platform, but it's private, you know, for our mm-hmm. yoga school and where everybody can post photos and po and, you know, tag each other and comment and I just, I love reading the breakthroughs that people share. And I think most what I love reading is the acknowledgements. Mm. You know, every, every week people are acknowledging one another, like really, hey, what you shared on that last sharing circle was so beautiful, so vulnerable, or wow, that was, that was such a great question that you asked at the last, uh, you know, 200 hour call. And just really seeing that acknowledgement and that love and that support. 
because I know, you know, in, in many environments, again, I'm not, I'm not here to throw Harvard University under the bus. They're great. They're great at what they do. They're a lot of wisdom, a lot of like really smart people, you know, and they, you know, there's something magical about this community and the people in this community of the way they, they lift one, each, one another up and support one another and see each other and, and really encourage one another, you know, and that's, that's really what this, this path is all about. Yeah, uh, increases the likelihood of each person actually receiving something useful and getting through the content, no matter how long it takes. There's no rush. We have people who've taken the same training. I don't know, Sandra, who's on this call, how many times she's taken it, like seven times or something. And it's not, yeah. not because it doesn't work. It's because it's fun and it's meaningful. So... Mm -hmm. That's yeah, and I mean, using Sander as an example, it's right. She's done it seven times. It is not because she's a slow learner. She is a, <laughs> she is a smart cookie. Yeah. What it is, she loves to serve. She loves to contribute. She loves to to be that to see the new cohort of yogis come in and to really be there with them and support them and just be available for questions. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, that's the cool thing is that there's there's no expectations. It's like yes, we have calls on Wednesday evenings or Sunday mornings. But you don't have you don't have to come twice a week. You don't even have to come every week, right? If you miss a week, that we have recordings, and and the trainings are running year round. So it's it's really a blessing to be on the journey with people like Sandra and so many of the others who are mm -hmm. here. Um, and and a big part of it, you know, Elizabeth wrote in the chat. You know, besides a beautiful community, it's also one of the most affordable five hundred hour programs out there. It's true. It's true. You know, we used to, I mean, even when, you know, Hanna, we can say when we used to lead in-person yoga teacher training, whether it was in Finland or Mallorca, Spain or India or Bali or Mexico, wherever we went, um, there was a lot more cost involved, right? There, you were talking about you had to fly to some other destination and then there's accommodations and meals and, and to, you know, all, all of our travel to be able to go there. And, and those were incredible experiences, but they had a higher cost. And so that's the beautiful thing now is being this, this online yoga school where you get certified from the comfort of your home or the comfort of your trailer or the comfort of the, the local park that you're sitting under the tree or the comfort of wherever you are, um, you know, and being able to, to be with your family and to continue working. So there's no time off of work. There's no travel, no time away. Um, so we can make it much more affordable. And, and as, as Elizabeth said, you know, 500 hour, you know, when you join, you, you, you know, you can start with the 200 hour hero's journey. And that's what most people sign up for. But then once you find out, it's like, whoa, there's also these other courses on pranayama breathing and yoga nidra, which is yogic sleep and the, and the philosophy and, you know, so many different courses, many people are then inspired. I'm going to do my 500 hour and then, and then you earn that highest level. So it's, um, it's, 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 that's a big part of what we also want to do is being able to make this accessible, make it, make it affordable, make it accessible. Um, as you often say, Hanna, no yogi left behind. Mm -hmm. Like this is our motto, like in every, every case, every circumstance, you know, it's like, how can we, how can we support the, the individual? And I know I can say for myself, I wasn't, I wasn't wired this way from birth, right? It was, it was from doing yoga and doing yoga teacher training that I've become more generous. And I still got, I still got lots of work to do, but it's like, it's, it's like the more we do the practice, it, um, it just call, it just like lights a fire inside to, to want to, to share, you know, it's to the point of, Sometimes I'm, I'm sure I'm annoying to some people. I remember when I first discovered this practice, like I'd be in a lineup to get a, a tea or whatever. And they're just always talking about yoga, always talking about yoga. Um, and it, it be, just becomes a lifestyle and a passion. Mm -hmm. so, so with that, again, so excited to have you all here with us live. Uh, our family. See, there's all kind. Of, I can't keep up with all the chat comments, but I, I know there's some beautiful uh, continuing conversation in there. And you know, one of the things you talked a little bit about the the 200 hour, the hero's journey, and it made me think about like right at the beginning of the hero's journey, one of the themes, one of the topics is integrity. 
Integrity. I mean, and it's such an important topic for those who are on the video. I actually, about 10 years ago, I got the word integrity tattooed on my arm as a reminder of really the importance of integrity, of being, being in alignment with our best self, with our highest self, doing the right thing. And, and that, that work of integrity has actually been a big part of our relationship, Hanna, and the work that we've done over the past 10 years that we've known each other. Uh, would, would you share kind of your experience of the, you know, the work of integrity, what it means for you, um, and how, how that may be applicable to others? Yeah, like how to apply integrity. So what integrity means to me is like being honest with myself or discovering, because sometimes life happens so fast that I don't have time to notice what I actually think or feel like I would want to, I think it's like, maybe for a lot of us, like we want to fit into the world and we want to be useful to the world. And in some ways we might neglect our needs or not even be aware of like what actually is happening inside of me or what I actually think. So integrity would be, it could be journaling. It could be meditating. It could be having a meaningful conversation with someone you trust right? About what is the right thing to do? <laughs> what is the right way for me to go ahead? What is my next right thing to, you know, if I were to take a step like that? And I think also like the reason why we bring it up in the teacher training as like one of the first things mm-hmm. is because it, if we are in integrity, then it's not so hard to speak up or it's not like it makes it gives you confidence if you feel that you're in alignment with yourself that you can trust yourself that you're honest with yourself then it's easier to you know participate in the world so to say and contribute to the world and one of the things that I often share when it comes to integrity is that when Jack and I were together in the beginning we were kind of slowly, um, how can I say, we were advancing slowly because I was a single mom with two children. So I was like not looking to bring some guy into my home or into that system because I was protective of, of my kids. And then you had your own life, right? You had been living abroad all over the place. You were a free bird. So you probably also had like not had had not planned to like move in and raise a family like overnight so we took it slowly and so for a long time we were a long distance relationship and then I uh I I did my third teacher training and during that time I had some quiet time and some some self-inquiry time where I noticed that I really liked you and for my own sake, I noticed that I had a desire to spend more time with the person that I was going to share my life with. And I did not know what you were, I was not physically with you. So I was in in this inquiry by myself in the teacher training. And I felt like if I were to share my life with someone, I would also want to wake up next to them, maybe have breakfast, like, you know, have the person closer, more involved in my life. So to admit that and to realize that was kind of a process for me. And then also at that point, I did not really know what you were thinking. So when I had done my training and returned home and met you again, I kind of felt like I was like risking our relationship in that I felt like you could either say, no, this is not what I want, or there's an opportunity of bringing us even closer. So I felt like in a way, if I had not told you that, um, I would have been out of integrity with myself. And then also I gave you the opportunity to be an inquiry around what you really want. Like, what is the right, right thing for you? Like, do you feel the same or do you feel differently? Right. Mm -hmm. And that was like one of my most powerful and vulnerable moments of integrity that I, where I like really applied it to my decision-making and, you know, like I knew then that I would have 
have to or I got to open up my home to you if you wanted to then move in or not I don't know like it felt really important to have that conversation with you yeah no I, I remember that and that's you know if who knows what would have happened if you didn't right and and we because because of that conversation it really did bring us so much closer not long after that we I remember we went out to that cottage my grandma's cottage and, and designed the hero's journey curriculum and and really it's like hey we're going to be in this together this is and and really because you ended up feeling the same like you also yeah. wanted more than meeting every three months right exactly yeah and 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 wanting to to really create together that's when you know happy jack yoga went from just me this this backpacking vagabond uh, doing you know a few workshops by myself to when the two of us came together and really created a proper yoga school and created a curriculum ba based on feedback from so many students that were like you guys need to do you know start doing yoga teacher training of your own and and that was um I mean, that, that was a result of that integrity conversation. And, and that's what we get to see with many of our students yeah. when they, when they go through this work and it's not easy, you know, some, but sometimes there's conversations in our lives that, that need to be had. Um, and, and, and yeah, I mean, now to reflect back almost 10 years, you know, since that we met and the, the journey we've been on and, and I just really acknowledge you, Hanna, for the, just who you are and the vulnerability that you bring and and the you know that you put up with me uh at times and uh, and the fact that we the fact that we could even navigate this past year uncoupling with such grace with such love with such empowerment and encouragement and and still continue to co-create and and come together and and be excited about what we're going to create next and what we're going to do next and you know, I feel like none of that would have been possible without the work of integrity. It doesn't mean it's always easy. It doesn't mean that we're perfect and we don't sometimes overreact or, or whatever, you know, but it's like we're somehow committed to something bigger. And, and, and that's, I mean, to me, that's, that's, that's what this journey is all about, this hero's journey. Yeah. And I think like the reason why we can navigate this is because of integrity, because it is also integrity is not like putting forward my best self. Integrity is now I'm really frustrated. Now I, I notice I have something here that I need to work through when it comes to our relationship. I mean, like we are able to navigate all of this because we allow ourselves to be honest about the process of uncoupling for example. So I think that's why, um, and maybe for outsiders, it can seem a little bit interesting that we are now best friends, but, but I think I remember when we were first, when we first got together, we were saying like, both of us were a little bit scared and we were saying that worst case scenario, we are, may not be whatever we don't know where this is going to go but we we will always remain best friends and that's what we promised to each other before we got into a relationship with each other and it's really incredible to see that we are able to do that yeah and i feel like a big part of it comes from from trust mm -hmm. you know being trust one another you know you uh you know something i can share just this past week we went into a little uh, a great retreat out in upstate New York, and, and one of the facilitators there happened to be a, a psychologist. All right. Is that right? The right word? Psychologist or psychiatrist? Yeah. Psychologist. 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 And 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 Hanna lovingly, as 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 she does, is like really encouraged me because you've been you've been working with a psychologist for you know, what close to 15 years since your first husband passed away. So you've seen the value, I should say a therapist, right? That's the word I was thinking of. You know, working with a therapist. And you've seen like the importance of that, that being one tool, not the only tool, there's yoga is a tool, there's many tools, and just the the impact that it's had. And of course, you know me very well. And you've, you know, noticed it's easier for you to see from the outside than me, who I think I got it all figured out. And, you know, you've uh, noticed some areas where I could, you know, benefit from therapy. And, and I trust you, 
and I trust you. And I've, and I've, in fact, in the past, I've tried different therapists that didn't resonate. Um, and I feel like just this past week, I met somebody that, that really would, would shares the same values, shares a lot of the same beliefs, you know, very yogi. Um, and to, I'm really excited, uh, this week we'll be starting, you know, to connect in that way. And I think, you know, this is maybe just something for us to step back and realize there's many different tools out there, many different modalities. And so we're not saying that yoga teacher training is going to fix all of our problems. It surprisingly helps with a lot of things. Um, but I, you know, it's also opens us up and opens us up to, to different possibilities and different ideas like, Hey, maybe, maybe I do have room to improve in this area. And then, you know, from that work we do at yoga teacher training, then maybe we reach out to other resources, whatever they happen to be. And so, yeah. And, and yeah. it's, for me, it's just a reminder that it's, it's this, this work just keeps continuing. Yeah. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just want, I just want to do, I, because our, our yogis who are here with us live, I love that you're engaging with us. I see Diana shared a beautiful little post here in the chat that I want to read. Um, Diana, Diana from Essex, UK says the unwavering support and encouragement from this incredible community have left me astonished. The constructive feedback and constant commitment to constant and never ending improvement have not only boosted our confidence, but also translated into tangible growth, both on and off the mat. It's difficult to put into words the profound impact this hero's journey has had on me. It has been a transformative experience, peeling away layers upon layers that have obscured our true golden selves. Nice reference to the Buddha in Finding Joe. And it's, it's, it's so true. And, but I got to acknowledge you, Diana, and, and frankly, everybody who I see here live with us, it's because you did the work. It's because you showed up and kind of like Hannah alluded to a little bit earlier. It's not enough just to read the book or to, you know, passively watch the lecture or kind of sit back, um, but actually to engage, to engage, to do that deep self inquiry like you did, Hannah, right at your third teacher training where you you did that inquiry on integrity, which ultimately brought us together, which ultimately created Happy Jack Yoga as it is. And so it's kind of like we got to get ourselves into these types of environments. And if if you if you vibe with us, we'd love to welcome you. And if and if not, we really encourage you to find a community, to find a find somewhere that you do resonate with that feels right, um, because this is this is the work of it, and this is what it's all about. But again, it's we we need to to do the work. Right. It's like the, the whole integrity thing. Integrity. One one idea of integrity is, you know, doing what we say we're going to do. So if we say that we're going to, you know, you you guys all know I'm crazy. I get up at 4 a.m. Um, not everybody needs to get up at 4 a.m. But let's say that you say, you know what, I'm going to start getting up earlier. I'm going to start waking up at uh, 6 a.m. So I have time to do my yoga. If we say that to ourselves the night before, and we set our alarm and then the next day the alarm goes off and we hit snooze. Now I'm not here to criticize you because I used to do that many years ago, but that's like chipping away at our integrity because it's like where we say we're going to do something and then we don't do it. We say we're going to do it and we don't do it. And when we really start exploring there, there's so many areas in all of our lives where we do that where we, you know, we, whether we express it publicly or whether we say it to ourselves. And, and on the flip side, as we start building this discipline and we start, you know, increasing the level of integrity, um, we, we feel it in our own lives, but then it really translates um, everywhere else. So I love that, you know, thank you for sharing Diana. It's beautiful. And again, I just want to put it out there. If anybody, if you're, if you're, I'm, I'm so curious, um, if you're uh, listening to this podcast, if you're still here 50 minutes in, um, that I acknowledge you and, and really thank you for being here. And again, if you have questions or something that you would love for us to, to explore, send us an email at the info at happyjackyoga.com and, and really, you know, let us know how we can serve you. 
Let us know how you can, how we can support you. Um, because this is, this is what it's all about. So maybe just, I'm going to do a, yeah, Hannah, go. I just wanted to say that like our secret plan for this podcast is also to kind of discuss the topics that we do go through in a teacher training. So the first episode was a lot about like, what is yoga? Like just the foundation of what we think that yoga is for us and what yoga has done to you, Jack, and to me, how it has changed or added things into our lives. And now we're talking about integrity, which is one of the first things we'll discuss in the in the hero's journey. And so you don't have to take the yoga teacher training, although we talk a lot about it. It's not to like shove it into everybody's system. It's just that the curriculum is really interesting of the 200 hour teacher training. So a lot of these calls will like use it kind of like a little bit of a backbone or like a skeleton to the conversations can go anywhere, but we'll often describe um, what we are in inquiry around in the teacher training, which begins next Sunday, September 17. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to take the training. You can still have all the nice conversations around it if you want to listen to the podcast, because there's going to be a lot of uh, meaningful self-inquiry and insights that um, we will be kind of busy with because we are leading the training, right? And also because these are topics that we really love and that we try to live in our everyday lives, right? Yeah, yeah, that's so true. I mean, that's a big part of what we want to do is just bring a taste of the 200 hour hero's journey and just kind of bring that into the podcast again i would say we're, we're still kind of navigating figuring our way through this podcast journey right so i we had that unexpected news a week ago and uh, but i feel like in time we're gonna we're gonna create a flow of like mm -hmm. you know having a specific theme for each of the episodes and we'd love to have a QA and a section you know so that's why please send in questions and even sometimes we'll pull in people who are live with us here in zoom so if you'd love uh to join us live in zoom click the link um below the show here so that you can get the code and join us live in zoom and uh, because yeah we really just want to keep this conversation alive like this is something um I, I feel like this is our this is this is our dharma you know using a term that is really dear to pam from kansas mm -hmm. city missouri you know, really connecting to our life purpose, really connecting to uh, what our truth, our calling. And, and it's like when, when we can figure out that thing that, that lights us up and when everything comes together, you know, if I'm, I'm approaching mid forties now, most of my life, right, was not, I was like, especially twenties, twenties, like totally lost, thirties, figuring things out. But it's like, eventually as we're on this path, things start clicking and coming together and uh, you know what, what what i love just for example right now here at where i'm studying at harvard divinity school i feel like for this short period that i'm here for a few years everything is so aligned because i get to study sanskrit which is the original language that yoga was passed down in thousands of years ago so i'm, I'm learning this language for the past few years so i get to study that every morning and then in the courses here at Harvard Divinity School, we're reading the texts like the Bhagavad Gita, the Ramayana, the Bhagavata Purana, the Yoga Sutras. So we're reading the texts that were written in Sanskrit. And then I get to do this internship, this field education at the local temple, the, the Bhakti Yoga Ashram, where I get to actually experience and get, get filled up from the practice of chanting these mantras in Sanskrit and doing these rituals and then and then from there get to connect with all of you get to connect with you in zoom get to connect with you on these different platforms and and share and pay it forward what it is uh, that we love about this practice about this lifestyle of yoga and it's i i just i i share i've said it a few times in the last few weeks because it's just kind of clicking for me it's like this is crazy like everything feels so aligned um and and I know that's not that that particular path is not the path for everybody, but somehow the hero's journey, somehow this practice of yoga kind of opens up. What is our dharma? What is what it, what is what is our calling? 
And that's what it's all about. And we also get to experience the things that you experience over there, all the all the courses you take and all of the interactions and anything meaningful you do share with our community by creating courses on different topics or just by, you know, sharing what you're navigating during the, the calls. And that's really, really special, I find. For yeah. myself, I am also in training in a different way than you. I'm taking an integrated yoga psychotherapy training. So I bring a lot of that into the community. And, and it seems like it's a, in, in, an interesting kind of coming together of all of us. And yeah, like a platform like that. Yeah, that's it. Again, that's the, that becomes the beauty is being able to share it. So you're right. Like the, having created last year that course on yoga for spiritual care, which mm -hmm. came from my studies here. And we just finished the, the Buddhist psychology and mindfulness course, which was amazing, amazing. Even though that's like, I'm, I'm not Buddhist myself, but I you know took some studies here in that and just the conversations that that created and that it developed uh, and the questions that came up were, were what really what makes it all worth it. Yeah. So. Yeah, such a great reminder. So if you feel inspired by any of that, please reach out. We'd love to love to just find out how we can serve you, how we can support you. If you have any yoga related questions, um, I will quickly drop, uh, let you know, this is, we're creating this as a, a listener supported podcast. There's no expectation whatsoever, but I'm just, I'm just going to drop the link in the chat. We've set up a, a Patreon account and for, you know, yogis, if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple and you get a few podcasts in and you're like or a few episodes in you're like oh this is kind of cool I'm, I'm getting some value from it you know for the price of a, a cup of coffee per month uh, you can make a little contribution I got, got to do a shout out to our sister Sue in Sturgeon Falls Ontario Sue you were officially our first contributor um, to our Patreon uh, last week like right after the uh, the uh, episode finished and, and truthfully there's no expectations so you know, anybody don't feel like, oh, I, I need to do it. Uh, but if you feel called to, if you want to make a, a little contribution that really supports us so we can keep showing up here every week and getting it out to all the different platforms, as many people as we can. This is our this is our love. And it's really an honor to be here um, with all of you. So again, I'll just quickly say this Sunday, 200 hour Heroes Journey starts September 17th. Uh, you know, please, if you've got questions, let us know. The following week after that, we have a course on Yoga Nidra. This is a 25-hour certification. Yoga Nidra is yogic sleep. So if you- It's if a you meditation have, technique. It's a meditation right. technique. And it really, it's, it's, it's literal translation in Sanskrit, Nidra is sleep. So it's, it's giving you the benefit, how to sleep better, how to get those benefits. Um, and if you want to practice live with us, we've got live yoga uh, classes. We can get you free. You're welcome to join. Uh, if you want to join us live in podcast, click the link to join us live here in Zoom. And if you have questions, shoot in questions in. Um, there's so many ands. If, you, if you're listening on Apple and Spotify, we'd love if you give us a five-star review. Leave us a review. Leave us a comment. Um, so that we can get this get this yoga knowledge and conversation out there to more people. But it's an honor to be here with you, Hanna. Shout out to Diana, Elizabeth, Mariana, Sandra, Sarah, or Chada, Sue, Tammy, Tanya, and Alice and Scott. Thank you for being here. Mm. Make it an amazing rest of the day. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.